So in order to get a nice snappy bounce here, we need to make sure that the point of impact lands on a whole number, looks like frame 15. Okay, so whenever I scale time in the dope sheet, I'm usually gonna have to select the keyframes and snap them. So there's no auto snap in here, unfortunately, although there is in the graph editor. But I have a manual snap command, so I'll go into the edit menu and just choose snap. So click snap, boom. There we go, so at frame 15, we have a nice snappy bounce. Excellent, so I think our animation is completed now. So I'll go back to the file menu, save scene as, save out to version seven. Now we finished our animation and we're ready to add lights to the scene. This is a simple outdoor scene. So we can represent the lighting here with just two lights a directional light for the sun and an ambient light to represent the environment. So I'm gonna to go to the create menu and go to lights and I've got directional. So a directional light has rays that are parallel. So it shines in just one direction. When I click, it creates the light, but you'll notice just like the camera before it, it's very, very small. In fact, it's only one centimeter in size. So I want to make sure I have that directional light selected and I'm going to go to its attributes. So I can click up here or press the control A shortcut. And now I've got the lights shape node. And just like the camera before it, I need to go into the object display and increase the locator scale to something like 20 or 30 and press enter. Now you can see that the directional light has three arrows. So let's tumble around the perspective view and I'll grab my move tool, which is W and just move that up so we can see it better. And in fact, I can move it wherever is convenient. When the scene is rendered, the illumination from this directional light appears to be coming from an infinite distance. So in fact, the position of a directional light doesn't even matter. So you can place it wherever is convenient. So I'll put it over off to the side in my top view. The only thing that matters here is the rotation of the directional light. But we won't see the effect unless we enable lighting in one or more of our viewports. So I'm most concerned with my camera view. What's it going to look like from the camera's point of view? So I'll highlight that view just by right clicking in it to make sure that it has focus. And I'll press the seven key on the keyboard. And now I'm gonna see lighting. Okay, so it doesn't look like very much right now, and it's because we haven't rotated the light yet. So now I've got the light selected. I'm going to hit the E key to rotate it to change the lighting effect. So I'm going to choose actually to move the light over to the right hand side. So I'm going to make it sort of more intuitive for me. So I'll kind of know that it's coming from the right side of the scene. So the position of the light doesn't really matter. It's just that I place it over here. So it's more intuitive for me. We can test out what we've done by once again, giving focus to the camera view and pressing render the current frame. We got our render view popping up. And now you can see with the lighting, our bump map is quite dramatic. That looks pretty good. We don't have shadows and we haven't played around with the light's color or intensity yet. So why don't we do that? I'm gonna store this image and I'll go over to my attributes and we could increase or decrease the intensity. This value is not in any kind of real world units. It's just completely arbitrary number. Um, my advice is a good value here might be around 1 or 1 1.2. Uh, for the color, if this is sunlight on a sunny day, it could be pure white or we could tint it a little bit blue. Or maybe we could even tint the light of the sun a little bit orange, but then tint the ambient light a little bit blue. That might give us an interesting effect. 
And the thing you need to know about Maya is that the lighting and rendering stuff is all impressionistic. You're not trying to reproduce exact physical measurements of light or exact color temperatures. You're just kind of making it up from an artistic point of view. You're trying to make it look good, but it's not corresponding to any real world measurements. So I might choose to make the color a little bit orange. I'll click on the color swatch and move this over towards orange a bit. Uh, just a little bit, because if it was an extreme orange, as you can see in my camera view, it's looking pretty radical, right? So I want to have a very desaturated, yellowish, orangish color for my sunlight. There we go, very, very, just a hint of orange there. We can click Accept, and then back in our render view, we can compare the difference if I do another rendering. And we can go back and forth. That's the first version with intensity of 1 and uh, color of white. And this is the one with intensity of 1.2 with an orange hue. Good. All right. So we need shadows too. So let's go down and turn them on. Here's our shadows section of the attributes for the directional light. Maya has two kinds of shadows here depth map shadows and ray trace shadows. Depth map shadows are pixel based and they have a certain set resolution. That doesn't work very well with a directional light. So instead I'm going to use the other type which is ray traced shadows and that's vector based. So I'm going to turn that on and I won't see it in my rendering unless I also turn on ray tracing in the renderer settings. So I'm going to open up the render settings here. Display render settings window. So on the very far right of the clapboard icons, I'll get my render settings window. And what I'm looking for is in this Maya software tab, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to ray tracing quality and turn it on. Otherwise, I won't get any shadows. So that has to be on. Um, and back up at the top also, I can change the quality of the rendering. So I might as well put it to production quality now. Also, in this window, I can go back to the Common tab. And I can scroll down a little bit. And I can change the size of my rendering if I so choose. So right now, it's set to 640 by 480. And you'll see that in the camera view as well. There are a lot of presets here I can choose from. So we've already set our framing. Um, so I'm not going to want to change the aspect ratio or the shape of the rendering. But I did want to show you that, in fact, this is how you would do it. If I was rendering out to a high definition video, you'll see now I've got a wide screen instead of the 4 to 3 aspect we had a minute ago. I'm going to actually just put that back to 640, or in fact, just for testing purposes, I'm going to knock it down to 320 by 240. It'll just render more quickly. Good, so the resolution gate is showing me exactly what render resolution I've chosen. I'll go back and give focus to my camera view again, and press the clapboard icon so we can get another rendering. So now, in fact, we do have shadows, ray trace shadows, and production quality rendering.